So in the last few web dev tips, we've set up an IP geolocation service uh, using the IP API, uh, API and uh, we've been able to take the user's IP address, uh, work out their location, save it into the redirect property of our short URLs uh, to give us some stats about who's accessed the links. Uh, but what we're going to do in today's tutorial is just avoid sending any unnecessary requests uh, to this IP API service, uh, because if we're running this locally, uh, and you might have found this if you're running the code yourself, that you'll get a local IP address, so it'll either be colon colon one for an IPv6 or 127.0.0.1 if it's IPv4. Uh, and if you try and send that to the uh, ipapi.com uh, service, you'll just get a failure. Uh, so it's a bit of a wasted request. And if you are worried about uh, rate limiting and so forth like that, or ex using up a quota if you're using another service, uh, then we can do something about that. We can stop the request being made uh, just by putting a simple check in uh, before we make that request. So that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial. So really quickly, uh, we just want to create a bit of a block list of uh, IP addresses that we don't want to look up for uh, and if we get one of those IP addresses we can either default it to a, a string of our choice or just put something like unknown or something like that into the user's location. So what we'll do uh, is first of all we'll just create that uh, block list uh, so we'll say it's uh, IP uh, local list for example because we're only really going to focus on uh, uh, local host addresses. However, if you did want to create a block list as well uh, for other IPs, you could add them in here too as well. Uh, so we're just going to say if we get a string back of colon colon one, or also if we get uh, an option of uh, 127.0.0.1, uh, and potentially you might get local host as well as the IP address uh, if for some reason the request comes through and, and that is uh, what is set as the uh, the remote address. So any of these IP addresses, we don't want to send the uh, re Axios request here to the ipapi.com service. So we'll just say uh, if the IP local list dot includes uh, the IP that we found uh, up here from the uh, user's request. Uh, so if it includes that, then we're going to set the uh, user location equal to uh, local host. And what we'll do here, instead of uh, setting this as a constant here, we'll just say uh, we'll just say user location uh, can be defined in one of two ways. Uh, but if not, if uh, if it's not in that uh, blocked list that we've got, uh, then the user location will be set as it was before. Uh, using the request data from the ipapi.com service. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Um, put a comma in here, which I don't want. And also there seems to be a TypeScript problem here by the look of it. Okay, so it looks like uh, the IP address could come back as uh, either a string or a string array. So we'll just type that as a string. Uh, I'm pretty sure I haven't seen it come back as an array uh, when using uh, this uh, format before. Uh, there is actually a library, I believe, uh, for Express and Middleware, which will do a good job of parsing the IP address uh, from the request. Um, but again, for our purposes, this is totally fine. Okay, so let's just review what we've got. So we've got this uh, IP local uh, list. So those are the local addresses that we don't want to send requests for. And if the IP address that we're parsing out of the user's request uh, does uh, actually exist in that list, then we'll just set the user location to local host. But otherwise, we're going to carry on and do the uh, request lookup uh, with the ipapi.com uh, service uh, and then ultimately we'll be setting a user location variable which we then enter into the database. So if we save that and uh, let, the, let the API update. Okay so if we just go over to Postman for example and uh, let's just create a new short URL uh, and you can see we get the uh, URL to visit in here. And if we just make another get request uh, with the uh, data that's uh, with, with that URL that we've been just been given, uh, just create a new tab here and enter that in. So we're actually visiting the URL at this point. Uh, so we'll probably get a redirect here in Postman. Uh, and you can see yeah, it's loading up the, the YouTube page for that. And to see the stats, what we'll need to do is just uh, go into the database at the moment because we don't have an endpoint to actually view those uh, at, the, at this point. Uh, so if we just go into our terminal, for example, I'm logged on to the, uh, the Mongo service uh, locally, uh, the one that's running locally on the computer. Uh, so we'll say db.urls.find uh, and hopefully we should find the last one that was just created there. Uh, and yeah, and as you can see, this this last entry that we've got, which we created a moment ago, uh, you can see has got the location set as localhost. 
and we can be pretty sure that the uh, request to the uh, ipapi.com service hasn't been made and you can see we've written that local host entry in as the location. So you go, there's just a little tip just to save you some requests and stop you using up your quota for any third party services that you might be using. So if you don't need to send the request, then uh, make sure you put something in place to uh, stop those requests from being made and put in some default values. Uh, in our case, it was checking for local host properties, but this could equally apply to any invalid data that may be passed in from the front end. So in the next tutorial, we're going to place an endpoint in our API so we can actually retrieve those stats via a network request uh, rather than having to log into the database. And we'll need that before we move on to creating the stats app and actually pulling those uh, stats down uh, to display to the user. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.